Howdy folks, good late morning. Here's a part two video for today. So right now I'm still at the Peace River Botanical and Sculptural Gardens. However, now there's actually a little boardwalk that you can go on that leads you to the Peace River. And, you know, I like to think that they do call it Peace River for a reason. I think for me, I think they like to call it Peace River just because of how tranquil and peaceful it is. But the Peace River is one of the longest rivers in terms of uh, mileage in this part of Southwest Florida. This actually meets all the way up with Arcadia, which is just a bit further up north. My goodness, though, it's a breezy one, and it's a little chilly. You figured the winds right now are kind of coming from the northeast slightly. But the Peace River is known for basically having brackish water, as you can see. You can't really see the uh, surface, you know, that's just because there's a lot of tannin content in this water. As I've mentioned before, tannins are essentially a form of acid that leach their way into the water. It essentially acts as a dye. That's actually used for the same thing on leather, which gives it those darker colors. But rest assured, though, it's by no means a form of contamination. It's perfectly safe. But oftentimes, you'll find tannins coming from swamps, marshes, and even our oaks, too, around here. Whether it be uh, live oak or even Chapman's oak, just to name a couple. But, you know, like when rain happens in other uh, tributaries make their way into the Peace River, those tannins are carried there. And they eventually will lead into the Peace River. But it's crazy to think, like, you wouldn't even think that this is a river, just based on the sheer size of it. But we're kind of getting to the point where Peace River is soon making its way to the Charlotte Haba. And I gotta say it in a Matt in a uh, Boston accent. You have to think too, like, this is where the Calusa Indians settled. Like, this was essentially where their capital was based. It was here. You know, they really knew how to live here, live off the land. You know, whether it be searching for oysters, mussels, or even various fishes, you know, especially even largemouth bass, for example, and snook. They were all here. But, you, know, you guys can't see it as well as I can, but way out in the distance are your Australian pines. Those are, in fact, invasive. But I would prefer to do a dedicated video on the Australian pine when I'm actually right next to one. Because that way then you could really see the visual example. Wow, it is really breezy. <laughs> it's really breezy. That's just because there's no... There's no form of cover. Like I said, it's getting to that time of the year, too, in Florida right now, where it's going to start to get a little cooler outside. And that goes hand in hand with water temperature. In other words, the rivers and even the Gulf is going to start cooling off quite a bit. But yeah. You have a chance to see some mangroves, like this one. This is a white mangrove. And keep going. 
here we actually have a sculpture of something called a keel. Hopefully you guys can read that. There we go. They actually had the, uh, according to here, they had to say, they had to use a 200 foot crane to actually get this here. Because you figure this probably weighs, as it said on the exhibit, up to 5,000 pounds. That's crazy. So it's like, good luck getting that to move. You'd need some serious heavy equipment. And this was the cool part. So right up here, that building is actually, I can't remember the exact family, but it was here where the whole idea of the gardens began. This is essentially like the foundation where it all, where it all started. So in that community center, they have like a gift shop and you have a chance to read a bit more on how this place really had its genesis. But even here, this is cool. So like they're showing these uh, succulents that can only survive in a xeriscape, which basically describes a dry landscape. Oh, wow. This almost looks like aloe vera. But keep in mind though, mates, at a botanical gardens, it's not allowed for you to pick off of them and take it for yourself. Because I'm pretty sure they have cameras around here and they would see you do that. And it's just not worth it. So just keep that in mind too. If any of you decide to go here, don't pick anything. It's not worth it. That's when you can basically visit your native garden nurseries if you're looking for something in particular. There we go. Got a monarch. Oh, I spooked it. There we go. Crazy to think how this flew up to at least a thousand miles just to get here. You can see right now that it's actually pollinating. It has its little sucker that it uses. Oh wait, no. Never mind. I like mistaken that for something else. But right now, it's using their claws, or their limbs. I don't know why I said claws, that was silly. But they are collecting the pollen, and they're just simply going to pass it on. And this is actually a swamp milkweed. And oftentimes, milkweed are the types of flowers that they're most attracted to. That's actually their host plant. So that's something to keep in mind. We've even got a Chinese banyan right here. Yeah, as I was saying, yeah, they have their Chinese banyan right here. So they're like these types of trees that highly spread wherever they're established. And this was most likely brought here from seed. And even though this is non-native, it doesn't mean that it's invasive. So alrighty, you guys. Wanted to share some insight regarding the Peace River and this little part of the botanical gardens it's all right there might actually be a third video because i'm just about to enter onto another boardwalk so let's see where it leads to all right you guys take care and journey on a journey is outwards see you later folks